a women's group and they carried it forth and they took it beyond their confines. And so therefore, uh, 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 the people that are associated that know about that ministry, they believe that that's a men's or women's ministry. That ain't no women's ministry. That's a sacrificial praise line. Everybody that has breath ought to offer up a sacrifice of praise unto our God. Amen. And ought to be willing to do so. But because it was began by men, women, that you don't participate in it? Lord help us. Lord help us. Lord help us. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I want to see that where you, where you said that the great falling way of men is the reason why there are less attendance. Well, again, if you're telling me it's in the epistles, they must have been talking about a church back then. Amen. I'm talking about where we are today. Why there's, oh my God, if it was less back then in the early days of the church, pastor, then, then we can't blame that on the black church. Am I right? If there were less men in the church back then, as it is today, that ain't the fault of the black church. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You know, the Bible's very clear. There are many that are traveling on that broad way. And many, and that's the path of destruction. There are many that are on that. But there's a narrow way, a straight and narrow, constricted way. And there's only a few that are traveling, and scarcely shall the righteous enter in. I venture to you, sir, that the reason why there is less men and even less people uh, 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 that are worshiping God in spirit and truth uh, operating in our churches because they're not willing to travel that straight and narrow way. Amen. We want to do things our way. We want to set things up according to our way of understanding and our intellect. And know this, that will always conflict with God because our thoughts and our ways, they just don't match up. They just will never match up. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. I'm glad. This is what you says. Send your pictures. I find it and, and, and get it to you. I've left many churches because of women causing a backsliding state. Lord have mercy. Oh, God. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Um, and, 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 I, and I know that that's your experience. And, and I, can, I can respect that. But this is what I would say. Um, when I, if I'm talking to somebody, don't let anybody else be your reason for leaving a church. If that church is teaching and preaching the unadulterated word of God, anybody else that's there, I'm not there for them. I don't come to church because of uh, uh, that person is there or this person is there. I come there to get the word. I come there to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. And like the Apostle Paul says, is there anything that's going to separate me from the love of Christ that exists, the love of God that exists within Christ Jesus? Not anything. Not anything. Nothing is going to separate me. Amen. I'm not going to allow nobody on the face of this planet separate me from God. I don't care what their actions are in the church. I don't care how they're acting. Let me reject that phone call. I don't care how they're acting in that church. I ain't there for them. I ain't come there to be a uh, uh, to to be to, to I, no. I'm not there for nobody in that church. I'm there for my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm there because God brought me there, and there is something for me to learn. Even in that, even in that regards, even if the church is operating in an ill manner, and I've been in them kind of environments myself too, Pastor, I know this by way of the Holy Ghost that sometimes He will place you in an environment for you to be an example. Amen. For you to be an example. Amen. That's what he does sometimes. God has done that. He, matter of fact, he does that with us. The Bible says that we are in the world and of the world. He didn't take us out of the world because he wanted, to be us, he wanted us to be an example to the world. Amen. We are to let that light within us to shine forth so it can show forth and see and so they can see the Christ in us, not us. See the Christ that within us and then glorify God the Father for the works that come forth out of us. Because of our relationship with him. Amen. That's why we're peculiar people. We are peculiar people because we operate in an environment that's totally against us. This world is not our own. It absolutely is not our own if you're in Christ. This world is not our own. Amen. And I am, and I did a message uh, sometime early last year. I am who I am because of the great I am. 
Because when you have confidence and assurance of your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you have confidence and assurance in who he has made you, who he is yet making you, then there ain't nobody or nothing that can shake you. I don't care how somebody else is acting around me. I'm going to uphold a standard. When I was working with the Social Security Administration, I'm going to just share this with you. This is my testimony. When I was working with the Social Security Administration, amen, and um, this was in uh, the mid-90s, amen, right before I got saved, I was working in Elizabeth, New Jersey. And there was a great mess that was going on. First off, a friend of mine who was a secretary who had got hired in the spring of, of 1995, went out on maternity leave, and, um, and when she came back in October 1995, she told me that she was being sexually harassed by the manager, the district manager. Now, it was bad enough that he was doing that, but he was doing that while she was out on maternity leave, calling her at home and things of that nature. This had been his history. As a matter of fact, he had just came back to the organization in 1990 after a year of... of a uh, 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 self-imposed year of retirement uh, because he had came up on charges before. And that was the option they gave him. And they brought him back as a manager in another office. So uh, uh, at that time, I told her that I would represent her. i never done that before. I was going to represent her in that case. And we absolutely won it, praise God. And that was around the time I got saved because uh, in January, that happened in, in December 6th, uh, 1995, when he tried to unceremoniously un and, and unjustly fire her. I took on that representation on January 21st, 1996. I got saved, and I knew right then and there that I wasn't out there operating on my own. God was leading and guiding me. And guess what? He don't lose. He wins. Well, in that process, uh, um, I was under great subjection by that manager. Um, no one was there to support or, or to assist me there. But I told this to the assistant manager uh, that who, who was brought in from the regional office because they were looking to move that other guy out. And this the assistant manager was there because he was well, well liked and favored by the regional commissioner. And that district manager knew that. So what did he do? Because he had control of the office and he controlled the duties of that assistant manager. He had him do nothing, just stay in his office and keep to himself. He ostracized him. So one day I was in the office talking to this assistant district manager. He and I would talk. And we talked it candidly. And his name was Phil Matteries. I said, we were talking one day and I was telling him about what was going on and what he would, he was really sharing with me because I knew it. And he says, well, I told him, I said, well, Phil, I'm going to tell you something. This is the way that I believe. I don't care. I do not care if there's anybody else that's willing to stand up with me. When I know I'm right and I'm 100% right, I will stand and I will stand by myself. And I don't care. There ain't no person on the face of this planet that's going to come shake me. I don't care how many numbers that you have. You're not going to shake me because I don't believe in standing uh, uh, on, on the side of wrong and I will not ride that fence. I will not ride that gray area and just hang out there for safety. And I, and I said that. And don't you know, I'm going to show you how this works, y'all. I mean, don't you know that a couple years later, um, I, I was still working with this young lady, and we were winning that case. This was now 1999. The EEO process in the federal government is long. It's long for one reason. It's designed to discourage you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't faint in well-doing. Amen. For if you weep, if you faint not, you shall reap what you have sown. And I knew that, so I was hanging in there. I'm going to stay in there. You, ain't gonna, you can't shake me. So, so, so during that process, I had a, a friend of mine that worked in the, the Equal Employment Opportunity, Civil Rights Equal Opportunity Office for the New York region. The New York region comprised the state of New York, New Jersey, the Virgin Islands, um, yeah, New York, New Jersey, and the Virgin Islands, and the Bahamas, amen. Uh, uh, the New York, the, 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 yeah, the, the United States, the U.S. Virgin Islands, amen. And so in that process, they represented over 6,500 6, employees. Uh, uh, the Civil Rights Equal Opportunity Manager, she says, speaks very highly of you, Arthur. I says, what did she say? She says that, that you are a man of integrity. I said, she said, what? You're a man of integrity. Now, why did she know that? Because I had a stance, and it was well, I, I had a way of, uh, I, and, and understand this, I'm not disrespectful to anyone. I did not disrespect no management or anything like that. I just know how to speak and deal with them. Amen. In the way that God says, you ought to give honor to those who have governed, rule, and authority over you. But I know how to speak in a way that they, that well, I know how to function the way they function. I know how to come at you. And I told the uh, uh, sacrificial praise line this morning, 
one thing that you do not do is do not allow your emotions to dictate how you respond or react to something. Anytime you do that, I guarantee you're going to be wrong. So I know how to keep my emotions in check by way of the Holy Ghost. So when she said that I was a man of integrity, I told that friend of mine, I said, you know what? When is that position that you have in? Because she was in a, a position that was known as a developmental position. And it was looking to move you up in the, in the organization. So I, she told me, and I said, well, you know what? I'm going to put in for it in the position that's mine. She thought I was crazy. And some people might think I was crazy if you knew the story. Well, yeah. And I said, well, no, you don't understand. I'm in an adversarial role. I'm against them. They're telling me they would rather have me with them than against them. And don't you know that when that position end, ended for her, I put in for it. And then on March 29th, of the year 19, uh, nine, uh, 2000, I reported to the New York Regional Office in the position of Equal Employment Opportunity Specialist. Yes, that's right. That very same position that I declared that I was going, that I declared was mine because of what was said about me. That's exactly what I attained. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is, sir, is that when you uphold the standard, when you uphold the standard, what God ordains, he will absolutely maintain. That's right. He absolutely will. And it's in spite of great opposition. I never, I never allow opposition or anybody run me away from what I know is the truth. Because I stand on the truth. Amen. And, and, and so therefore, I'm sorry to hear that, that you left them churches because of the women and how they cause a backsliding state. I don't see how that can be. Amen. <laughs> because again... Uh, uh, that's that's not giving credit uh, uh, enough credit to to the men there in that church, sir. Uh, um, how you going to allow somebody else to cause you to backslide is beyond me. You're the one that should be concerned about your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And why would you allow somebody else? Why would you allow somebody else to cause you to backslide? Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I, I'm yet praying. And I know, I know that some people, some people will use that and, and say that is the reason why they did this and the reason why they did that. But my thing is, I believe in this. I don't believe in excuses. Excuses can be made by anybody and you can always come up with an excuse. When I was in the world, I said that I never had to be wrong because I knew I could frame something that would show that I was right. I could do that in my flesh. I could do that. But when I come into the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, it, it ain't about excuses. He ain't accepting no excuses. He's going to ask you and I, when we stand before him, not what so-and-so did in their body, but what you and I did in our body. And how am I going to stand before God and explain to him that I left the relationship with him because I allowed somebody else to, dis to dissuade me, make me get discouraged? It's my relationship, not theirs. I guard that. I guard that with all, with all, with all my, so yeah, I guard that. I'm on guard for that. That's why I keep on the whole armor of God. Amen. Because no weapons formed against me shall prosper. And anytime somebody tries to take you away from the Lord Jesus Christ, they are absolutely doing the work of the enemy. Amen. Amen. So therefore, yeah, uh, you know, this thing about men and women in the church, that's something that uh, maybe somebody at a different time or another can be debated among folks. I'm not one to spend a whole lot of time on that, y'all. Reason being is that we got people dying in the church. People are thirsting after after knowledge, after righteousness, and it's not being presented because there are too many of us that are standing on our platforms talking about things that don't matter. They absolutely don't matter. Absolutely. Whether a man is a pastor or a woman is a pastor, that really does not matter to me. That does not matter to me. I don't see nowhere in the word of God where that's going to cause you to get out of a, a, a relationship with God because a woman is the pastor. Because there's no men in the church. God's work must go on. And it will go on. And he will use whomever. If he decides to bring a donkey in that church and let him leave the church, that's what will happen. Amen. All we need to be concerned about is what the word of God is trying to tell us and what we need to do so we can conform to his likeness and his image. Let's not get caught up on dogma because in the, in the Bible, there is no such thing as denominations. There's no denomination set up in the Bible, y'all. None. 
You find, you tell me where you see Baptist or, or, or Presbyterian.